Hey guys, School of Race, uh, Raywood School of Racing Graphics here. Uh, I'm just going to go through how I made some ornamental uh, Christmas text. I designed two cars using our newest bundle pack. Uh, earlier this week, I designed a asphalt truck and a dirt late model. Here's the dirt late model uh, and the asphalt truck. And I used all on both of these cars, all the elements come from uh, bundle pack 12. To follow through on this demo, to follow along you won't need to buy the bundle pack i have a couple of assets in the description that you can just download for free from uh, vecteezy and the two two fonts that are similar to what i used here uh, on these uh, graphic styles so uh, after i created these two cars I, I got a lot of questions related to how i went through and made that text style uh, in adobe illustrator and if i used anything from photoshop which i did not uh, it's all adobe illustrator so i'm just going to go through step by step uh, how to create that effect and then also make it so that it's uh, super easy to modify uh, and or change the color of so that you can uh, integrate it into other wrap designs so you can see this particular car here has nothing Christmas about it, uh, but the same style with just uh, some different colors gives it a little bit more of a, um, a meaner, sinister kind of a look uh, that's pretty cool. And so uh, I'm going to show you how to do that as well, uh, be, being able to build it out um, with uh, global colors so that you can go through and change it easily to match any other uh, wrap design. Uh, I will say this, just kind of, a, I didn't advertise it on the product page, but if you do buy uh, Bundle Pack 12, it does already come prepackaged with the graphic style in the graphic styles window. In order to find that, you're just going to go to window and you're going to go to graphic styles and whatever graphic styles are within this file will be uh, located here. Give me just a second. If you guys have any questions or comments well i'm working through this video uh, feel free to ask them and i'll do my best uh, to answer them as i go along so uh, i'm going to try to do this tutorial a little bit differently than some of my past ones i'm going to try to treat it uh, as a beginner tutorial so as though you don't really know anything about uh, adobe illustrator and you're starting from scratch because it could be super intimidating when you look at all the menus uh, in Illustrator, if it's your first time opening it, or you're, you want to follow along with this tutorial, but you're not familiar with where the tools are. So I'll try to address where the tools are located. And we're going to be primarily using uh, three different window palettes. So you're going to want to have your graphic styles open. You're going to want to have your appearance open. And you're going to want to have your swatches open. And all of those can be found here. So you can see appearance here, which I have mine checked. Uh, I have my graphic styles open, which I have it checked. You're also going to want gradient open. Uh, and then I also have uh, my swatches uh, open, which you can see here. Many of the uh, window panels that I usually have on the right of my screen, they're all going to be located in here. And you're not going to use all these uh, to the same degree. Um, so you can kind of see the ones that I have. These are the ones that I use the most. But make sure you have those four graphic styles, appearance, swatches, uh, and then also uh, the gradient. And if you got those open, it'll help you uh, follow along pretty easily in this tutorial. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, one, th one thing is when I go, b go back to 12, uh, graph bundle pack 12 here, which again, you don't need, cause you can, in the description of this video, you can find the links to two fonts, uh, Boker and Ultra. Ultra is similar to this. It's not the same. It doesn't have the little, uh, minutia and details to it, but it, it's a similar style font. And then Boker, which is this font here, uh, that's included. And then um, there's also a link to a different pattern on Vecteezy that you can download. We're going to use this one out of Bundle Pack 12, but you can really use any type of ornamental pattern. I didn't want you to have to buy this pack in order to follow this tutorial. So if you, you can go download those uh, free assets and either follow along live or uh, follow along later. All right, so I'm going to go back to here, and I'm not doing anything life-size. This isn't like uh, for a wrap or anything like that, but I do know what my sizes are because that's really going to help uh, within the process of uh, deciding what my incre increments are going to be for each and every detail. So instead of 
doing this from scratch. I'm going to actually keep this on my screen and keep referring to it um, so I can go back and know that it's a reliable source. Because to, to land on something like this with this much detail in it, um, it's not like you just get that on the first try. You gotta, you kind of have to experiment. You, you, you put things on it, you test it out, you lighten things up, you darken some things, you move gradients around. And so it wasn't like I just went through and did this in like five minutes. This is, this is probably about an hour's worth of work. Um, now it's going to be a lot faster here because the work is already done and I don't have to keep playing with it to figure out how to get it into the best best case scenario for like a race car or any other uh, type of format. Um, so, but once we create the style, we've only got to create it once and then all we have to do is change colors, which is super easy and, and goes by super fast. So uh, I'm just going to move it over here to the side. I have this here set up uh, as the same size. If you do want to follow along and you don't have bundle pack 12, just install the font ultra and type out a one and a two, uh, and that'll help you. Okay. So first things first, I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to set up my color swatches. Now I already have mine here. Now all of this, all this gold that you see here is really only made up of four different color swatches. And that's typically how I think of any kind of gradient. that's going to be metallic is I have one that's, um, like a medium, medium darkness, uh, a really dark one and then a really light one. And then I always create a color white um, according to whatever metallic color I'm trying to create. And I'll talk about why as I get more into the tutorial, that's really important. So I don't want to just use any white. Like you can see, I have a white swatch in here, but I also have one in here called gold white because it's going to be specified to that element with whatever uh, wrap I'm working on. So I can change it from gold white to maybe blue white or red white or whatever. And, and I could bring in a tint of red using it. Um, as we get there, you'll see it'll, it'll make more sense. Okay, so basically we need to break this down into the three colors. So I'm just gonna show you here. Uh, I'm gonna have three different swatches that I'm always gonna be referring to. And that's gonna be uh, the dark gold, then the medium gold and then the uh, light gold. And in, in this product here, uh, these are all named. They actually have names. Uh, I brought them into a new document and then m messed with the, the document settings a little bit and it erased the names off of them. So just forgive me on that. But dark gold, medium gold, and light gold. And if you want, uh, I'll give you the hex numbers, which is going to be uh, BF7221, it looks like. I could have put these in the description so you could copy them. Okay, and then I'm going to have uh, here this one and this one. And then white is always just six Fs. Six Fs. Okay. And so these are the colors here. And so whenever you want to make a color, if you've not ever made a color before in illustrator, which I'm sure you probably have, um, you just grab the element that you want to make a color of, right? And we have that right here. And then you see it, it's selected here as the primary in the swatches panel. And then you could just drag and drop it here. And because I already have it set up as a global color, it comes in as global, meaning that little white tab there. And so the reason that that's important is because let's say I undo that, uh, I can go into that swatch and I can adjust the color and everything will adjust within the art. So if I want all my medium uh, golds to be this uh, tealish color, then it shows up just like that right there. So uh, you can see it, 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 I didn't have to pick through the art in order to, to make that change. And the same with uh, the dark gold, at least in theory, that's what it should do. So you can see right there, it does the same thing. And then also with this one, if I turn it pink, you can see there's quite a bit. So it actually should have changed a lot more. I, I think I went through this document and kind of messed it up a little bit. It'll actually just bring a fresh one in. I'm gonna delete all these out. And I'll go back to here. And this should bring all my colors back in. It's not fun to figure these things out on live video. All right, so now I'll bring it back in and then I'll add all the used colors. There we go. And let's see. Yeah, so now you can see there it changes out. So 
there you go. So anyway, we'll be able to change those uh, really easy later. So those are my uh, colors that I'm using uh, as I'm building this out. So what you're going to want to do now is go ahead, if you got your ultra downloaded and or uh, typed in, um, I just bring them really close. I'll probably change the spacing on these later, depending on how we build it out. But what you want to do, and this is going to be really important as you uh, are working in Adobe Illustrator, is keep your graphic styles open and keep your appearance open. Think of the appearance panel sort of like a layer panel, but it's not really exactly the same. It's more so how an element is built. So you can see all the, all the different things I have going on on this one uh, particular number style. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten different things that are building out this one graphic style that I can drag it into my graphic styles and then use it on other text later, which I'll show you here with the word uh, Christmas and here in a little bit. Okay, so... Uh, what I'm going to do is instead of trying to pick through this and figure out how I did it, uh, I'm going to actually just turn off all the uh, ones and I'll turn them on as we build it out. So what I want to do right now is just get to base. Like that. Just like that. So this is my base, my base graphic right here. Um, and meaning it doesn't have an offset path. And so I can see how I built uh, my gradient on there and got mixed objects here. That's what's going on. There we go. I'm just gonna delete the one to make it easier. We don't need it actually. Uh, and then turn that off. So I can see how I built my gradient here, which when you look over here at the gradient panel, it's pretty simple. There's not a lot going on. Uh, it's mostly just from one color fading to another color fading to another color and it looks like i just use gold white and light gold um, on that one particular spot but i'm actually down here i'm sorry i'm on the wrong thing here here we go so i've got this one selected so i used white gold and medium gold and so now what i want to do is i want to create my first base which is going to be these two together as that same scenario now i could just eyedropper it but that's not really going to show you uh, how it's done so at first i'm just going to change it to white the white gold and then I'm gonna go ahead and drag this down here and in 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 theory what will happen is is when you drag that down the white is just gonna be there um, based on whatever color you've already got it so it'll probably like mix like if you had it black and then you pull that down there it's gonna mix them together and it's gonna be like a white into black but because I had um, that applied previously it threw on that uh, that gradient so, but basically how we build this gradient out is gonna help us build out all the other gradients uh, a lot faster. So I've got my gold white and I'm gonna bring my medium gold in just like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it so that it's at 90 degrees. I always like my gradients to start at 90 degrees. So typically that's the best way to get the metallic look, at least in my opinion. Then I'm gonna, it looks like I bring in the light gold under the medium. so and then it looks like I went back to white pretty sharp like that so you can see there and then I went back to medium so now this is really important in Adobe Illustrator when you're working with gradients especially uh, global colors in your gradient palette you can't just uh, click and do that because what it does is it creates a mixed color and we don't want mixed colors in our graphic we want everything to be global so I'm gonna hold down the alt key or if you're on a Mac, the option key, and then I'm gonna click the one I want and I'm gonna drag. And it's gonna make a duplicate uh, of the color that I have over here and drop it right here without it being a mixed color. And you can see there, it does a pretty good job of replicating uh, what I created in the first place. So I'm gonna switch back and forth. Just look at my gradient here. Look at that gradient there. So I'm gonna move this guy down just a little bit. And it is really important during the process that um, that you are kind of matching what I'm doing, but you have to understand the way light works in a way so that when you're creating something that has a metallic look or a reflective look to it, light likes to refract and it likes to bend. And so um, 
when you're when you're adding elements, you almost got to make them, in a sense, think of light like it's crisscrossing because it's it's hitting one thing and it's bouncing off of another thing, and so it, it it is actually supposed to be a little bit confusing to the eye, and so even though we're gonna match what I've previously built, um, it's really important that you know how how you're getting the effect, which as we build it out, you'll see the effect come more and more to life uh, and look more and lo more like a metallic ornamental object rather than just a flat gradient. Because when I look at this right now, uh, I don't see anything special about it, but it's, it's knowing how to use it effectively. And then later I can come and slide and move things around and get a totally different effect out of it. So once you kind of have a basic understanding of how this works, it, it just opens up your design toolbox that much further and gives you another kind of tool in your tool belt to be able to tap into, um, to know how to get these kind of effects going in different ways. Um, whether you're using like a hologram effect or whatever. And so it's, it's really important to understand how these gradients are going to work, uh, in unison. My kids just got home and they are running around upstairs and they're super loud. So I always tell them that they're okay to make noise. I apologize if they interrupt. Um, okay. So, uh, what we want to do now is move on to the next step. So before I build inward, which is what we're going to do, I want to build outward first. So I'm going to grab this red guy here and I just did a flat red. I didn't do anything to it. That was like super special or anything, just flat red, just created a little bit of, uh, Contrast, not much though. And I'm just going to copy uh, my offset path, uh, how, how far I have it offset. So right now I'm working with text that is, like I said, it's not life size. It is 1.7984 tall. And that's important as we're working through this, that if you're working through it with me, you're going to get the same, uh, same effects and same sizes as I do. So just for now, I'm just going to go ahead and round it up to 1.8, just so that we're working with a nice round number. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and ass assign that red over here. So in order to do that, I'm just going to select my 12. I'm going to drag this down here. And now I have two sitting on top of each other. So if I turn off one gradient, it's the same exact thing. But I'm just going to grab it and turn it red. Now, I'm not offset the path yet, but I'm going to offset the path. And then that red's going to pop out. I just have to make sure that this is selected. So I'm going to go to Effect, Path, offset path, and I want to copy in my setting, which is what I copied from here. So it's 0 0.0216. It's probably changed now that I changed the size of this. Okay. And so there we go. Just following along nice and red. And then the next one I did, I used this, it looks like probably black on your screen. It's actually like a darker forest green kind of looking thing. Um, so I'm going to get the next one. And I'm ignoring everything that's on the inside so far, and I'm just building out the outside right now. And it looks like I did 0466. Now, the size only matters while we're building it, because as we resize it, we're going to, it's going to scale with it, and it's not really going to matter. And then later, if you want to go back in and refine it, and I'll round your numbers all off and everything, you can, um, but you don't have to. So if the numbers seem kind of random, or you're looking at them like, why is it that number? It's just the size that it was on my computer. I'm not doing anything super specific to any genuine size in my art, because I know I'm going to scale it up or scale it down. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate uh, this fill again. And this time I'm going to go ahead, because I've already duplicated, or I've already got offset path on this, I don't have to do that again. Now it's already on here and I duplicated it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do this. Paste in, and so you can see it's red, but we're, we're going to change the color. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to see what did I do for the colors. So it looks like I did this dark green here, and then I did the same swatch. Nope, I brought in this one here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, grab that, grab these, throw it on here. So it's doing it according to the last gradient that I already had on there. So it's already kind of doing it for me because I have this one selected. It's not going to do that for you because you don't have this built yet. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn this 90. And just, just, for, just for the sake of showing you the demo, I want to I build it actually from scratch. So I, br I brought the two green ones down. Now I'm going to bring this one down and place it somewhere close to the middle. Okay. Wasn't going for anything radical, just get something to create a little bit of contrast, okay? And when you select this one and then this one, you can see it moves a little bit, but it's probably nothing too egregious. It'll kind of stay with us. All right, 
So now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that guy. And it looks like I just used a solid color on the next one. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that to a solid color and get it to the bottom. And then I'm going to offset the path according to how I offset this one. So we're just going to click that. And it looks like 0 0.139. And I'll bring that over. Just like that. And that makes it pretty easy to look at. And I'll move this up. And I can do the drop shadow as well. So I'll go to Effect, Path, uh, Stylize, Drop Shadow, and Zero. And then the color, I'm going to go into my color swatches and select that dark green. Like so, and set this to Normal. I don't ever like to have a blur on in Illustrator. If you work in Illustrator and you're using a blur, um, I don't recommend it kind of does weird things to the file. And I'm going to go ahead and put that drop shadow on there. Looks like it's not showing up. Uh, let's see. It's always fun. Oh, here we go. Here's why. Okay. So. Oops. So I'm offsetting that by half of an inch, but I'm going to change it. So let's go 2.5. Probably should just look at the math on the other one. Yeah, I'm just going to look at the math. That'll make things faster. Here we go. And I'm matching pretty well to what I've got there. Again, I want to just remind you guys as you're watching, if you have any questions or if I'm going too fast and like you missed a tool or something uh, along the way, just ask, just ask and I'll do my best to tell you what the shortcut is or how, wh what I did. All right. So now I'm going to start going through the more gold, more or ornamental uh, side of the graphic. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to turn on the next fill and this one's going to be an offset path, but it's going to be negative because now we're going to the inside of the number and this is going to give us a good crisp white area to work with. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and because I have not created offset path on this guy, I'm not going to duplicate that one. I'm going to duplicate this guy here. Then I'm going to drag it above the gold. Okay. And now I can change the offset path to what I have copied from the white over here, which was negative z well, negative zero one, one, five, one, one, five, five. Um, and also, I haven't been checking this, but I typically just pop this guy up to 100, and then if it creates a problem, I go back and tweak it. Uh, four isn't gonna be enough in most cases, um, depending on the font and how many points it has. So I just pop that up to 100 if I'm wanting those nice sharp edges on, on the miter setting. And go ahead and click OK, and now I'm gonna turn this guy white. Okay, so now we see how we're matching pretty well here. If you're following along, you should be matching as well. All right, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to turn on the very next layer. And this is where things start to get um, a little bit more um, intricate. Okay, so you can see, uh, I just want to show you because this is important um, and it oftentimes gets overlooked, but minute details are really important and they don't have to have a lot of contrast in order for them to stand out. It's actually the minute details together that work as a collective that make the whole thing stand out. And so you can see this gradient here that's on top of the white is very similar to the one below it with just a few minor tweaks that just kind of start creating a little bit of a, a golden sheen kind of a thing. Um, and so just keep that in mind, though the, the difference might not be great, um, it's enough to create tension. So you can see there's tension right here and right down here. Um, and so we want to use that to our advantage. So because this, the graph, the gradient is so similar to what we have here, we're just going to duplicate the first one and then we're going to drag it above the white and now you'll see it's covering the white and then we'll get our math from our offset path on this guy. And it's going to be negative 0 0.0311. And now I'm going to go ahead and just offset that path. Oh, I, I guess I didn't 
have an offset path on that one. So if you don't have an offset path on something that you're doing, you can, again, just like I did the swatch where I held down alt or option and, and drug the swatch over here in the gradient, you can do the same thing up here. So I can hold down my alt key or option if I'm on a Mac and I can click and drag and it'll duplicate that setting to any of these other fills. So that's what I just did there. And so now I'm going to go ahead and paste in and you can see right there. And then I'm going to make some minor adjustments. And I don't know that they need to exactly match what I've got going on over here, but I'm just going to pull this down a little. So it pulls a little bit of the white in like that. And then pull this guy up a little. So it pulls a little bit of the white in, pull it down actually like that. And you can see it's a little bit of tension. All right. So I'm going to go back to this guy and I'm going to turn on the next layer. Now, if, if you're following along and, you're, and you feel lost, I'm, I'm, try, I'm going to try to explain here what's happening, okay? We're, we're essentially taking the, the base number and we're stacking it on top of itself multiple times in the appearance panel. And every time, we're, we're just adding a different fill to the new path. That's all we're doing. So it's not super complicated. It's just knowing how to use the details to your benefit so that the, the whole thing will stand out, okay? So now I'm just turning on the next one on here and I'm gonna see what we did. And you can see now it really starts to take shape. Now, things like this, this little sliver right here, I typically don't like stuff like that. So uh, if, I was, if I'm really dedicated to the project and I'm really, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it on this video, I would go through and work that. Like either get, be able to figure out a way to get rid of it or make it so that it looks like it belongs. Cause right now it doesn't look like it belongs. But you see just a little bit of a tweak there and it does look like it belongs or it, it's gone and everything looks fine. But this point looks a little bit out of touch with reality. So <laughs> um, you, you just, you kind of learn what works and what doesn't. So for now, I'm just going to leave it. But you can kind of see where the, the metal metallic look is starting to pull itself through in a way that's really helpful. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to that offset path. We're going to get the math from it. It's going to be negative 0 0.0755. Okay. And so I'm going to go ahead and duplicate what I have on top, all right? And then I'm going to go ahead and just paste it in, negative 0 0.0755. And if you're following along and you've worked everything according to the sizes that I have worked it, you should be coming up with a similar result. Um, so just to clarify, if I was to take this and strip all the styles off of it, clear appearance, and just turn it black, my starting height, again, I just want to clarify, is going to be 1.007, okay? So I just want that on the screen so that you guys know that's where I'm starting at. That is not an official starting point. That's just where I'm at in this video. I can scale it up and down later. I've already said that. Um, but I want to, I really want to stress that because somebody will message me and say, so do you do all this every time? And, and it, no, that's, it's not. I'm actually just designing right now. I'm not thinking through the math. Uh, I'll think through the math later when I'm applying it to whatever project, uh, I'm applying it to. So starting height there. Now you can just reference that anytime during the video. Okay. So I'm going to delete that out. All right. So now. I'm gonna go ahead and see how I offset this path and what did I do with the gradient, right? So you can see as you're looking through this here, um, the, the light is kind of working pretty hard right here. It kind of looks like it's hitting pretty hard in the middle and it's hitting pretty hard at the top and it's hitting pretty hard at the bottom. Now this is really important. If it's not going on a race car and it's going on like a brochure or a postcard, it really doesn't matter that much because anything, any media that you hold in your hand, it can have a lot of text effect on it. Uh, and it's super easy to read, but when it's a race car and it's a moving object or it's a moving billboard or a car, you have to have a different conviction related to how you're styling your numbers and how readable they are. And so some things have to be adjusted just to make it stand out. Cause the point of a race car is to be able to read the sponsors, read the number, uh, et cetera. So, my conviction while I was building this number is I do want it on a race car. I've got to make sure that there's an, enough light tones in it to really set off on the contrast. And that's why to me, it's really important to have light at the top, light in the middle and light at the bottom. Because if I just do light at one side or the other, the other side gets lost. Uh, and so it's really important, important to uh, work through it in that way. So I'm going to get my offset path and I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I think I already did this, but 
I'm not sure. So do it again. Yep, I already did it. All right, so then I'm going to go ahead and turn on my next one. You can see the process is just the same over and over and over. Okay, so this one was a small one. You can see there's a really fine detail in it. So that, that little outline that's on there now, that's just what we did previously. Okay, it's not actually an outline. It's actually a layer below what the new thing, the new layer, right? So you can see it's kind of working in unison. So I'm going to copy that number and I'm going to bring it over here. Now, actually, one thing I didn't check is I didn't change, I didn't actually change my colors and I thought something was wrong. Okay, so I gotta actually get this mid tone out of here because you can see the mid, the mid gold isn't in there. And so I need to replace it with uh, the light gold. Like that. And then it looks like the mid is at the bottom. So sometimes you'll duplicate your white just to press another color down a little bit. Like that. Nope, it actually looks like I used the wrong color there. You just click on it and look. There we go. Okay, so I have a little bit of the mid in there, but I wrapped it with that, like that. And that's going to be really important because if you get too much of one color, it, it can start to look flat. But you can kind of see, like, even right here, this is already... Um, it's already got a look to it that's unique enough. It's bright enough. I could put that on a car or anything and, and, and feel pretty satisfied with it. You know, especially, you know, when you start taking these elements, like stuff like this and bringing it in. Um, so I could, well, I can't use that one. Well, I guess I could. Uh, I could put this red like spark on it. And if I had a white one, um, I could put the, a white one in uh, and it'll just, it'll start to look really cool and dynamic, right? And so you can kind of play with the light in that kind of a way. So I w I'm already satisfied with what we have here, uh, but I like details as long as they're not creating uh, too much contrast. So now I'm gonna go to the next one. And in the next one, we're gonna go up and we're gonna create this next uh, piece here. So let's see what our offset path is. Negative uh, 0.0863. So we'll go ahead and we'll duplicate this guy and paste it in and you can see nothing changed because we haven't changed the colors yet so we got to look at this gradient so it looks like i'm i got to do something similar to this i'm going to pull this back so actually pull it up like that and Pull this up. And so all I'm doing is just going through and matching these. So I'm looking at this one and then I click over here and I look at that one and I don't, I don't care that they're the exact same. I, the basic idea just has to be in there. You got to get them close. Otherwise the effect in the end won't be right. Um, so, There we go. It's pretty close. Okay. And so, so here it's, it actually doesn't quite look as good as when the previous layers on it, but it's, it's going to be this layer and the next layer working together. That's going to really, uh, help it out. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to turn on my next layer and this one, again, it's going to be, uh, just light and white. Um, and so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to figure out what my offset path is. And in the offset path, I am clicking offset path and it's negative 0 0.1088. And I'll pop that on there. 
And again, I got to change the colors in order for it to take effect. So I know this color is not in here at all. And so now I'll take this. So it looks like I go light to white, back to light. So I'm going to do this. Okay, so now that gradient should be pretty similar. Now, when I'm going through this and I'm designing and I'm figuring it out for the first time, I play with it a lot. I mean, I like, I move stuff around, I, you know, and every, every layer is, is honestly adjusted according to the previous layer. And so um, I don't typically go back through and like, oh, I got to adjust the first time or the second one or whatever. It's typically everyone is building on top of the other. And, and, and mostly it's just to make sure that um, I am landing on a spot that, uh, that each layer doesn't, isn't the same, that there's a slight adjustment made so that there's tension created and that gold effect is, is uh, coming into place. So it looks like I left a little bit of that color down here, but I actually kind of like it without it. Um, so I think I'm going to just get rid of it and maybe I'll come back and adjust it later and, and add it in, but maybe I could bring this down a little bit like that. So whenever you're building, just always build your next layer so that it's got a little bit more tension. Um, that's different from the first one. Okay. So then it looks like we have one more to go. And that's going to be the pattern layer. Now the pattern is, uh, I, I put a, a link uh, in the description where you can go get a different pattern because you don't have to buy mine in order for this to work. You can just get a different ornate pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and select this one. Um, and again, it's going to be light. So I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to size it up just a little bit. Okay. And and then I'm going to apply uh, a gradient to it. Now, sometimes before, even though I know this is my artwork and I know it's clean, uh, I like to uh, unite and then make compound path because uh, it just it, I'm just making sure that the, the shapes are clean and there's nothing wrong with the art. Uh, and that's always a surefire way to find something wrong with it or if something's not combined together. Uh, and so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to use the light one and I'm going to put it down here. Then I'm going to go ahead and use the white and put it down here. And then this white here, gold white. And it's going to kind of give the a shimmery effect. Uh, and I'm going to go 90 again. I like to go 90. Now, another, another way to, to get that shimmery look is to like just throw like a 45 on one of your on one of your builds and it'll just kind of like shoot it a, a totally different direction that just helps the light and then you might have to go in and adjust it but it really helps the light um it, it look more like light reflecting off of something okay so let's see what did i do on this yeah it looks pretty much the same so now i could take this this is a seamless pattern so in in pack 12 all these are seamless patterns um, and that is important. Uh, and I'm just going to take it and I'm going to throw it into the swatches palette. I might adjust it. So I'll leave this guy here and I'm going to take this one and I'm going to see what did I do the offset path on? looks like negative one, four, two, four. Okay. And so I'm going to take this and, uh, let's see, did I already make the new layer? I did not. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. And then I'm going to set the offset path to the same. You can see you don't you can't really see anything because we haven't changed anything yet. And I'm going to select the fill and I'm going to pop the uh, pattern on it. OK, and so you can see the pattern in there. Now it gets lost a little bit. OK, so that's why it's going to be really important that we come back and adjust our gradient because our gradient, our white here is lining up too much with the white in here and white in here. Down here, we look pretty good, um, but we can um, definitely make some changes to it to have to give it a little bit more contrast. So uh, Illustrator is a little weird in how it deals with patterns. So what's really happening with this pattern is it's patterning the entire canvas. And then what's happening is that shape is just masking the entire 
pattern. And so the gradient control isn't really as good as I would like it to be because it's not really according to from here to here. It's more so how the, the pattern is hitting the canvas. If that all sounds confusing, I'm sorry. Um, but just know that you're probably going to have to make adjustments and then eventually expand your path so that it just becomes a path that you can control the colors in. Uh, and maybe I'll do that at the end and walk through that uh, a little bit just to help make sense of it. But uh, so I'm going to move this gradient a little bit here and a little bit here and then in doing that drop it back in and then just again I'm going to experiment pop that on there and now you can see that looks really cool right and, and I could probably tweak it a little bit more I won't for the sake of I, I don't really need to make a 90 year video uh, I'll, I'll do one more I, I want to pull this up a little bit because I want to get, a, I want to, I don't, that's too bold down there for me. I, I don't need it to be super bold. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then pop this. And a little bit more. I said one more. Now here I am. All right. Go one more. And then go like that. So that looks pretty good to me. I kind of wish there was a little bit more lightness up in there or maybe move that gradient. And this is where you can kind of like get lost in the weeds a little bit is you'll, you know, mess around with stuff for quite a long time before you land on what you want to land on. So I like that it's kind of coming through again right there. I probably have over adjusted it, but you get the basic idea and then you, you keep, you just keep playing with it. And so then eventually what you want to do is then come in and you could take this, I'm, I'm making, I always make a duplicate when I go to do something destructive, meaning I can't get back to this beautiful build that I have here. So I make a duplicate. And so I'm going to go ahead and go object, uh, expand appearance. And then what it does is it turns everything that we just built into shapes. And then I'm going to ungroup and I can, you see, I can grab that pattern. But if I was to release this and maybe release it again, oh, I got to release all of them now. What a mess. Um, so then let's see, I'm going to get there. Undo release compound path. Ungroup. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to figure out. There is a configuration in which all of these shapes become available to us, but right now it's still a pattern. I'm going to do it until I can figure it out. And so this is what's always funny to me is I'm going to do it again. I'm going to do this. Fill. Bam. I bet you that's going to do it. Now I'm going to ungroup it. And then release clipping mask. So there that is in there. Okay. And that means it's now a vector shape inside there. The pattern is. Okay. And release. Okay. So now I could take this, all these together. Okay, I'm gonna walk through how I just did that. So, because I think I've, I probably lost somebody. <laughs> all right, so here's the, tr the tricky thing about Illustrator, and this is where you can get lost in the weeds sometimes, is you can go to expand appearance and you think it's done, it's done the thing. Well, what it did is it, it did, it set everything to outlines. Um, and so if we wanna do cutting, we can cut, vinyl cut it, uh, but it also created a group. So now I need to take that group and ungroup it, okay? But it didn't do anything with this. This is still its own independent fill pattern. What I need to do is go to object. Now it's not expand appearance, it's expand. And I want to make sure it's the fill because we have a fill pattern in it. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now it's done. It's a group again, right? As though this is not confusing enough. Um, and and, and then I always get questions like this from people that are, that are new. They just can't figure this kind of stuff out. But it, it, it's more of like a trial and error. And then you do it so many times, you just know what to do. Um, and so the more times you do it, the better, actually. Uh, so then I can go ahead and ungroup it. And then I can just hit Pathfinder. And there you go. And what it did is it just um, took all my shapes that were within that shape and, and made it just those shapes now. And so now what I'm doing is I have to... Again, as though it's not confusing enough, I need to take it and I need to combine all of it together. And, and it made a mess. So again, it is slightly confusing. And this isn't a user thing. Like this isn't like, 
oh, I did it wrong, or you did it wrong, or it, it is literally, this is just how Illustrator works. So I, I'm going to walk you through this because I want you to understand this scenario. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab this. And I'm going to go ahead. And what's happening here is now that we've ungrouped it, expanded it, turned it into a shape, Illustrator took all of the negative shapes that are in here and made them empty shapes. So there's nothing in there. There's no color or anything. So we need to create an empty box. And then we go select, same, fill color. And, that, and here's what it did. It went through and it selected all those and we hit delete. Now we have a nice clean shape to work with. And we can just take this and combine it all together. Now that's all you have. You don't have a big fat pattern that's bloating your file. Um, you don't, it, you have, now you'll have full control of that gradient. And so I'm coming here and I can eyedropper that. So I got I'm back to base and then I can just take that shape that's there and mess with the gradient if I want to. I'm going to leave it for now, but just so you can see, you'll have more control than continuing to make pattern after pattern after pattern until you land on the right spot. Um, and even, you know, if you decide, I want that, but I still want all this build, well, you can just turn this off and then layer this over top of it, right? I don't prefer to do things like that. I am typically more like get the, get the swatch right. Uh, I just have the patience for that kind of a thing because... Now that I've done all this, I'm in a destructive work mode, right? I can't, I can't go in and like edit the two like this or, or fatten it up down here or whatever it is that I want to do because all my layers are paths now or all the, all the uh, different objects are paths now, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and delete that out. And see, Alan Coley says, when he saw this number on the car, he was hoping there would be an instruction video on creating the look. Yeah, I knew right away um, that I was going to have to do that because a lot of times I like to dress up the cars in my portfolio beyond what my products uh, provide. And some of it is related to um, if I put too much detail in the product, they don't open in certain pro uh, programs. And then I get people that are mad at me because they can't get it open. And then I got other people mad at me because they can't figure out how to get the art to work. And so I try to get it to a nice place, but also a simple place that's easy to uh, modify. So, but I did want to make this video. Okay. So I'm going to go back. You know how to get those, that shape now, if you need it. And I'll just turn this guy on. And the reason I want that guy on is because even if I take this and I shear it, um, my pattern follows along, right? And so it, it's all just kind of based on the, how, if you want to work in a destructive workflow or not. I try not to work in a way where I've done something f with finality to my art. Okay, so now I want to take this and I want to apply it to this. Now, some fonts are not going to work very well for this kind of a graphic style. And so this one actually does. It works really well. So what I can do is I can just take this guy here and I can, I'm going to actually duplicate it and I'm going to scale it down. Okay. Something a little bit more feasible for this. And I'm going to just pop it on my graphic styles. And sometimes you can name it. So I might just name it sponsor quarter panel like that. And then I can just grab this text and click it and you can see there, but something's not exactly right because there's a pat the pattern on it doesn't look right. And so typically when it comes to like smaller text on a car, um, I'm specifically just talking about a car, but this doesn't have to be limited to a car. Um, I, I, I strip some of the details out because I want the text to be robust and readable. Um, so what I'm going to do is take this and I'm just going to remove that ornate pattern and it stands on its own. It actually has a really nice uh, Christmas metalish gold look to it uh, that really works. And it doesn't need that uh, filigree, uh, you know, uh, pattern in it to make it really pretty looking. Um, and so I, I always do that. Sometimes I'll strip out one of the outlines or something like that in order to just get it to a place where it looks really nice. Um, so sorry, I left that comment on there. Um, and so... <clears throat> just always experiment with the stuff. And even, even this, like, you know, like maybe it's a little too, mu too dark right here and, 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 and not, and too dark down here. So I, you know, you just go in and you start moving stuff around 
and seeing what works and seeing what doesn't work. See how that kind of makes it a little bit more readable. So I'm squeezing the dark more into narrow spaces so that it's not so uh, 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 just taking over and abrupt, right? Kind of gives it a more shimmered look too. Like that. And then I could take that top one. And, I, and, I, and then because I've built this in a non-destructive way, I have that luxury of being able to always go back um, and adjust. Mess with it a little bit like that. So you can just experiment with it. Uh, I'm not going to do a whole bunch of experimenting here. So the last thing I want to show you is how do we get from uh, that to this, right? And how do we do it easily, right? Because I don't want to build, I don't want to spend all that time building that ornamental number and then go back, go back and have to pick through the whole thing and <laughs> switch colors out. That's ridiculous. That's a ridiculous waste of time. So if I built it right, one, I'm going to go ahead and select all unused colors. I don't like to have my swatch palette filled with a bunch of stuff I'm not using. So I'm going to go ahead and delete those. Uh, and then what I can do is I can, if I built this right, meaning with no mixed colors and all global swatches, I can just change the colors of these three swatches. So I could say, I want that to be grayscale and it grays that one up. But here's the problem. It looks like somewhere along the way I got into some mixed colors because this should be changing color. So let's take a look at what I did here. So I'll show you how to retrieve that um, if you want it retrieved. And so I'll go to grayscale. So that one did really well. It went right through. Okay. And so I'll say, I'll just call this one light silver. It should actually, so I'll do this. Light gold. These names should have already been on there. I guess I didn't prepare that very well. Uh, medium gold. Like that. And then it looks like light gold, medium gold. Oh, there's light gold too. Okay. So, um, it looks like I did not use one of them. So we'll go to grayscale and then we'll go to, you don't have it, have to have it selected even because the global swatch is global. And then we go to grayscale again and there we go. And then it looks like I also use this guy here. So we'll go to grayscale like that. And just turning them all uh, grayscale, like so I got one mixed color in there. I could see a little shade uh, of gray uh, in there or uh, gold in there. So there's a way to fix that. Um, so what I could do is just go here and looks like it's not showing up or unless this is it. I can just put that on there. Yeah, that was it. Or not. It's not, and I'm not going to take time in this video to figure out why that gold's in there. So in theory, though, let's just say, in theory, I built this totally correct, and everything uh, was built with global swatches without that little tint of gold that's in there, which is on one of the layers. I just don't know which one it is, uh, but it would be not that hard to figure out. Um, I can switch those around now to basically any color. And so um, I'll actually use this too here because it looks like it set up correctly and it's already using all the uh, different swatches. So let's say I wanted uh, the dark gray. I didn't use that one actually. Let's say I wanted to get this number into the shade of uh, uh, like a blue color. So I could just turn all of them blue, even the white right? And then it's better to adjust them as you go, because I didn't just do that. So that's my dark one. So then here's my next one. So I'm going to say a little bit lighter. And you can go back and adjust these later. And then I'm going to go a little bit lighter. And adjust it later. I'm sorry for not getting that mixed color out of there. It's kind of annoying me. And then go ahead and do the white one. Um, 
And then that one's going to be super light. Like that. And then we could do this. And you can keep adjusting these blues according to how the number is actually uh, saturating. So that's too 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 bright. Like so. Like that. Like that. And so now with this one, now obviously I wouldn't turn the number blue and leave it blue if I was gonna have uh, a black outline. So let's pull this over here. Uh, and then I would just change this to like a white color so that it was, that it stood out uh, really well. Like so. So now the, the two starts and there, and there, so there's my problem. I gotta stop clicking it. When you're changing global colors, you don't need to click your, you don't need to have your art selected. And then you can go through and adjust the, the blues even more. Uh, and I'm, I'm actually just trying to do something kind of like a little out of the box. It's not necessarily working, but you, and then you turn it pink. And so you, then you have the, you just have the option to go through and change all these colors without having to pick um, through the art, especially if it's set up correctly, like this one is not. So I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that kind of shows the way to uh, get that effect. Now, if you don't want to go through all that trouble and you just want to um, use what I've got in Bundle Pack 12, you can just go to our website and click Racing Graphic Bundle Pack 12. It is Black Friday Cyber through Cyber Monday sale. So right now you can get this for 30% off. Uh, if you're a premium member, you get it free with your monthly coupon. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you just, you'll get that effect in there if you're using Adobe Illustrator. It's just included in the graphic styles uh, panel. So if you guys have any questions, always feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, you can go to srgfx.com uh, backslash support. Uh, and I answer those questions typically within 24 hours, I want to say. Um, yep, yeah, right there. And we do have a hotline or you can call this number. I don't always answer it depending on where my kids are at, but I will answer it uh, if I'm not in the middle of something. Uh, but if you fill this out, I respond within 24 hours. So appreciate you guys watching, sticking with me through that video. And um, again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks.